Ladies and gentlemen, happy Friday. This is Questlove Supreme Friday edition. Wait, are we calling it Friday edition or is I'm, this QL live? live? Just QLS, QLS live. live. Oh, we're, we're QLS live. That's what we are. We only seven weeks. Every um, week. Get your zingers out, Bill. All right, let's have it. Let's get your zingers out. Uh, um, uh, about your hat? Yeah. <laughs> no, I got nothing. I think I've used them all up. What does it say? Um, oh, I didn't see. <laughs> wow, I didn't see the unpaid either. I, see, I didn't your, see it. Your D is like the you know, D, forest you know, green. I did. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, I didn't see. <laughs> <is black. laughs> oh my god, Amir, well, uh, is your hat about to be the new Soul Train leaderboard? Because I'm here for yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm with it. That's yes. exactly what Grace said. <laughs> She's like, are you now awesome. the walking Soul Train leaderboard? <laughs> Amir, put your head yeah. down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you don't know how to, you don't know how to take a screenshot on a computer yet. No, I don't. Right. Are you on a Mac? <laughs> so <I don't>. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, what did you say the cocktail today is? Shift Command oh. Four. Is it really? Shift Command Four. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah. Shift Shift Command. Guess. Really? Shift yeah. man. Yeah. Oh my god. Anyway. Oh, look at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. man, I, the shit you learn on the daily. I know. Yeah, man. We're we're educated. And this is the man that's nominated for an Emmy. The one that can't. I got nominated out. for an Emmy today. <laughs> oh, word. Wait, Congratulations. Nominee, baby. Nominee. Hey you. The daytime Emmy nominations where I crush have been <laughs> came out today. <laughs> Oh, so what, 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 time in this. So Sesame Street. What you get nominated for? Sesame Street. I wrote a song with a friend for Thanksgiving called uh, "Hooray, Hooray!" It's Thanksgiving Day, I believe, is what it's called, and uh, it got nominated it? for an Emmy. So did a bunch of it? Sesame Street stuff. Can wait, we hear it? Yeah. Wait, where is this? Where is this song Macy's debuted Brew, on? Twenty twenty, some shit. It'll, it'll come. Where is the song debuted on? Channel Four, NBC. Oh my God, you're okay. Okay. Oh, you scared me. I thought you were frozen. All right. Never. So I mean, was, <laughs> was this for the Thanksgiving parade or for? Yes. It was a. It oh, was a song. Were, it was you like were the, original song. For it was the cold opening to the parade this year. The cold. Oh, I wish I could find that. Wow. How does how does one get in that loop? What what loop? Oh, the cold open loop? Yeah, just the Thanksgiving parade loop. Like my Mullen Association or or my U Association got me into the Thanksgiving Day parade thing, but you know, it's not like it's always a, it's six you degrees had to, be on to like to do it. So what do you, I'm just Yeah, exactly. Like no one's just straight up asking me. Like I remember the night before uh Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy came on, Kanye decided the night before he wanted to be in the Thanksgiving parade, so they made him the last float. It was kind of odd. Like, it was an odd-looking float. Like, they mustered what they could together at the very last minute, but Kanye decided, you know, I got to promote my record, so I'm going to be part of the float. But how how does one get in that loop? I don't know. Sesame Street does the, has been doing the parade every year for, like, 10 years, and you guys are usually too behind us on the Fender float or whatever that is, right? The Tonight Show has oh. always been... Right. And so with right. this, with the opening, they, it was our 50th anniversary. So they wanted to do a thing with Sesame for the opening oh, during so our 50th Sesame year. Street. So oh, that's okay. why. I get it. Yeah. Good oh, my God. My affiliation there won't with be Sesame one this Street year. gets me the most. But yeah, I mean, who? what parade is going to be this year? Is there going to be one? No. Has it ever been canceled? These are all things we can do. I don't think it's going to be no. Yeah, I don't think it's no. no it's never been cold year. enough to be canceled. Uh, I think it rained once real bad, and that that year that um that Snoopy got caught, that shut it down once, right? Remember when those two big ass balloons got caught and he yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> oh God, I forgot about the Snoopy. I remember that. Yeah, like there was a disaster. <laughs> People just like ah! ran home or whatever. But hey, but damn. guys, not only is Bill nominated for an Emmy, but so is his woman Autumn. That's right, Autumn. Hey, from Sesame Street. Yeah. She got power couple today too. That's right. That's how we do. Is Amir's connection not so good? And uh, oh, 
Is anyone else like seeing Amir a little choppy? Oh, I'm not oh. good. Amir, you you got Wi-Fi on fifty dozen devices right now. Anyway, we're back. Are we yeah, back? a lot clearer? It's a lot clearer back. now. Yeah. Yeah. We Sorry, for I, I forgot to. I was so happy to see you guys. I forgot to use, use my microphone, microphone in my yeah. So, anywho, come on, um, y'all Zoom pros by now, all Zoom pros. So yeah, I I I like to announce that. Uh, due to the, I'm doing what I call the Rick Rubin challenge. That uh, the one thing I hate to do is well the one thing i gotta stop doing is saying what i hate to do because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then that's not good anymore but i i, I did my 6 a.m walk today yes uh yeah. what did you do just walk around the, around the farm or like what, how, what, um i mean this this is a large large there's like a large state park um if you do it at six in the morning you'll probably pass nobody so yeah it's being graced walked did our uh i guess our six miles now do you and grace walk in silence or do y'all listen to music um i like listening to uh comedy uh, uh comedy on streaming so okay I was like, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> like, that's it. No, I'm I'm asking for ideas. So I'm like, that's kind of interesting and dope. I'm like, who was y'all listening to? Oh, I, I have a, on my Spotify, um, on my Spotify list, I have something called, this is a, a real name, Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Which yeah, is, uh, from, from Alabama. Yeah, he's a football player. Very unfortunate name. Ha Ha yeah. Clinton Dix. So my, my comedy mix is on that. <laughs> so you can follow me on Spotify. Anywho, yeah. So that's it. Um, that's what's up. How you feel? How you feel after the joint? You feel like a sense of accomplishment? Like how how I feel? Um, it's good. You know, the, I was I was kicking and screaming earlier, and then I just went through it. Um, I'm just like when I was walking to work. Uh, that was more exciting to me because I felt like you got scenery. Going, yeah, I have scenery and I'm going somewhere um, mm -hmm. out here. There's just a lot of bugs, a lot of bees, a lot of flies, a lot of, you know, um, not to mention the amount of roadkill I pass. I didn't know there was, uh, man, it, we passed a lot of snakes, yo. Hey, them possums hard to look at, right? Those faces, crazy. Yeah, nah, nah possums, they ugly as hell. Yo, so, it's like, yeah. ooh, I, ooh. Raccoon. I had to run one off my deck the other night. Yeah, we oh, had a raccoon no, back in the deck, too. I saw a baby one in the back the other day. I was like, oh, you just so, ooh. Yeah. yeah. Raccoons <laughs> ain't that bad. Not to mention, bad, like, if, like I, if I got to drive, if I got to drive to the supermarket, um, deer are just oh, fearless. Yep. Be careful. Mm -hmm. They more hurtful Shoot. to you than you are to them. Super fearless. You know, what's weird is that, you know, people out here, most of them drive, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, the kind of cars that- Four-wheel drive. No, that, well, that too. Oh, that's scary. Um, like no, SUVs? they drive, well, no, they drive uh, the electronic cars. Um, hybrids. Hybrid. Oh, the hybrids. Yeah, and some of the, some of the joints, like Tesla's, like they don't make a, they don't make a sound. So it's 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 real, uh, yes. And these are dangerous curves, and like a lot of people aren't following you traffic you laws. Teslas, damn. Uh, I'm not driving uh -huh. a Tesla. My uh, the, the family I'm with they they have a like a like a college Volkswagen, so it's right up my alley. <laughs> you gotta rough it. I got stuck <laughs> up on by a Tesla in LA once. I had no idea what happened. I turned around, there's a Tesla right behind me. It's terrifying. You got struck by a what? Say what? I got, almost got struck by a Tesla in L.A. because it was so quiet and I was not paying attention and I walked out in the street and I almost got struck by a Tesla. Yeah, someone, that someone that we know very well, time. someone we know very well has killed two deer and a bear uh, with their Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I don't, I don't want to put him on front street. I'll tell you after the taping. Yeah, I'm but. calling Peter. Yo, oh. Yeah, give, nah, give Elon Musk their number. He might, yeah, he, he'll be happy to hear that. How about yeah. that? <laughs> 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 like shit, my feet, my vehicle killed two deer and a bear, nigga. What? This is why we need to be open. <laughs> exactly. 
Yo. Oh, man. Oh, Merle's waiting on us, guys. Don't forget, we got Merle coming Merle. up. Merle. I don't know why I keep doing that. Merle Dandridge. I don't Merle Dandridge. Yeah. Merle yeah. Dandridge. The beautiful Merle Dandridge from Greenleaf. Should yeah, her, absolutely. Let's let her in. See what let's she let her in. Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're joined today by uh, veteran Broadway. Oh, damn. She came camera ready. Oh, honey. Yeah. yeah. He knew this. He ready, All right. Let's give her an applause for her coming camera ready. We were. Woo! Praise. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Respect. What up? What up? Respect, what up? What up? What up? <laughs> Merle, <laughs> you, you can put your pajamas back on, yo. Like. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, you woke up like this? Oh, my fault. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. This is. She woke up like this mode. Okay. My bad. <laughs> I was kind of wondering, like, should I put on a good shirt or not, or keep my 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 toga on? But no, I dressed up for Merle. Y'all didn't. Oh, that's a good thing. No, I, I'm wearing a well, shirt, but it's a you know, it's a different thing down here. Yeah, <laughs> normal, depending on the level of the guest, is you know, I was going to keep my pajamas on, but I actually said I'll put a t-shirt on for her. You I mean, did. up top, up top. This is a tuxedo. Down Wait, below, did you though. pick it up off the floor, or <laughs> or was it like put away? No, nah, well, Root, Root, Roots merch is pajamas. I'm wearing a Questlove t-shirt, so Roots merch is pajamas in the crib to me. Wait, you got a Questlove Pac-Man t-shirt? Yo, okay, I don't think people seem to know that I kind of sold my shares in OK Player back in 2014. So I'm kind of like Russell Simmons to Def Jam now. Like, you know, I I used to own the company. But, I mean, OK Player is a fully functional operating system. So they make all this merch that I never knew of. But no, they yes. always made dope merch. Wow. But that my face is Pac-Man. So. Oh, my God, that's so cool. That is fly. I got to cop one of those. I'm going to cop yeah. one of them. I mean, oh, wow. where, where, Pat. where can you get that? Right, Merle? Good uh, I, uh, uh, the OK Player site. Okay. That I used to, oh, I might still own. I, but Merle, he'll send you one. <laughs> yes, I will us. get you one, Merle. I will do that. <laughs> so, Merle, how how are you? Uh, how are you coping in these times? Uh, every day is something new, huh? And every day, every day is a winding road. I got an <laughs> argument this morning on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Because I got fed up. It, I think the thing is, is that once this started in late March, I think people in people's minds, it's like, all right, it's probably somewhere between two to five weeks. And then, you know, we'll be straight by June. That's what people were thinking. And now I'm starting to see the what I call the. The, you know, putting us in keeping us in the house is oppression tweets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had to, you know, this woman who's who's a, an author. I'm like, well, dog, you you about to be put on Front Street. Like people are waiting for tweets like this just to, yeah, just to you know fry your ass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, what you have to understand is, and she still she wanted to stand on that hill. And I, I was explaining to and, her. And before I, we, I didn't see this argument, but just to answer the question, was she? Yes, she was. Okay. Of course. I just, I just want for clarification. I just want to. People. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, like her whole thing was like, uh, uh, Qu uh, Cuomo, the governor of New York, said, you know, people be considerate, wear a mask, and she tried to clap back, like, do your job and reopen up New York. Whoa. And I hit her with facts. I'm like, yo, we are the number one. We are the epicenter in the United States for the most cases. Like, we have three hundred thousand people affected by the virus. We have 28,000 deaths. Yesterday, 115 people died. I was like, don't you kind of mean like more testing or <laughs> where can we get tested or that? You, you just want to open up and that's it. And she was like, yes. Like she, I think based Look, on man, her- what White women been showing their whole ass during this pandemic. I'm just so <laughs> disappointed, and, man. <laughs> nah, white women been showing their ass. White women okay, showing their ass. It, it's coming. I think it's. It, I mean, it's definitely coming from like. Well, we had nothing to do with this, so why do we have to suffer? I think it's coming from. I mean, and me and my cousin, who's a sociologist, we talked about this a couple months ago. 
that when we kind of saw the tipping point of all this shit happen around June, July, you know, give or take, when white women realized they ain't have nowhere to send their kids for the summer and they had to take care of their kids just like regular working class people, mm-hmm. that's when shit was going <laughs> to happen. Mm-hmm. And all these white women are sitting at home <laughs> and them. Uh, they realize they really gotta take care of their shitty ass. Look kids. at Merle giving the mm-hmm face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lana, Lana Del Rey, she done lost her damn mind. Oh my god, yo, did you Lana see Del Rey. Azalea Banks's? Yo, <laughs> what you see say, Azalea, Azalea Banks's Banks clap back? That was incredible. <laughs> yeah. you so, say, Merle, Merle we, we don't want to take yeah, Merle. What, what's anyway? You so, how you doing, no, Merle? This, no, this let her finish right now. I think that everyone's masks are coming off and we're seeing the real D Holyfield. We're seeing Bass. what's really there. And the thing is, is I, I used to get real irritated and just angry. Like you're going to, you're going to kill us all with this mentality. But now I'm, I see that it's completely fear-based. They have no idea how to do with deal with this kind of um, uh, crisis, you know, and then, they're those you can tell when somebody's been through some stuff you know they're like all right all right you know i know how to kind of manage it but most people really really don't is what i'm finding and when you get to the root of it they're just scared so i have and i i had to really break it down especially for the people that i love this is why it's important this is why and it will when when i lay it out like my brother's a doctor and what he has to deal with and, and face with what our, our president is saying day to day, and he's suffering to, to choose who lives and who dies, that it is my, I feel like it is my moral obligation to stay in this house. And if I need to go out, that I, that I cover myself to love distance, not even social distance, love distance, so that you, mm-hmm. I'm caring for you, my fellow man. Right. It's only if this was a virus that affected one person. It's like, no, you're being a selfish motherfucker. It affects us all. It affects everybody, yeah. Right, right, right. Are you in New York City right now? Or are you... Have no, you... I'm in L.A. And, you know, I was... Okay. I know, because I was working on a, a new show and I came back because um, I, my friend really, really wanted me to be her um, husband coaches uh, basketball at USC. And she really, really wanted me to be there for the UCLA game. So I was like, all right, I'm going to bring an overnight bag. I'm going to come to the game. And then everything shut down. And then and it happened. Like, wow. Okay, well, here I am with, with just a, you know. A Wait, you don't live days. in LA? So you've been couching it? No, no, no. I, I, ha- I rent a room at my friend's house, and she okay. lives somewhere else. So I've pretty okay. much been in this house by myself for almost three months. Wow. Wow. Girl. What's that like? You know what? <laughs> nobody's bothering Humbling. me. Nobody's pulling on me. Nobody's, you know, I, I don't have to talk to anybody if I don't want to. And it's actually been extremely healing and meditative. After a while, after you, you get, I, because I'm used to moving really fast all the time, enough stillness and you get into it. You get, you get really into it. And uh, me and God, we have have had some serious time, and I've really just been able to to not only get through you know some of my own stuff because it's been quite a year, couple of years for me, but mm-hmm. after that, start to slow down enough that I hear my own voice. I, I'm my own artistic voice rather than doing somebody else's art. I hear my own voice for the first time clearly in a long time, and that has been really great to to be alone with and you know if i want to stomp around if i'm not feeling it if i get real mad at the situation i can do that and i don't have to worry about freaking somebody out and it, if i you know it it has a lot of freedom to it when you say it was uh mm-hmm. it's been a, a the, the last couple of years for you has been some things going on what's some of the things that you've that quarantine is giving you some time to work through mm. well let me tell you mm. <laughs> I love it. No, no because Damn. you know when you get when you get catch a healing when you figure something out you want to shout it from the mountaintops, right? And mm-hmm. you really I, are Grace Greenleaf. So <laughs> you really you are Grace Greenleaf. <laughs> well, look. So I'm um I'm a mixed girl, and I grew up in Nebraska, 
and yes. say what? Like Ashley Graham, she was on our show a couple weeks ago. She was in, at home in Nebraska. Ashley's from Nebraska? I didn't yeah. know. You know, she and I went to church together for a little while, and we fed homeless people in Thompson Square Park. That's how she met her husband. That's how she met her husband. Yeah. Maybe I was there that day. <laughs> Wait, what church is, is what church is this in Manhattan that everyone goes to that I don't know about? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's been around for a while, but I, I don't think it's doing the same. It, it's kind of spread out now. It used to meet at the Hammerstein Ballroom, but Hillsong is there now. Yeah, that's what she yeah, said. That's what, that's, that's what she said. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you mean to cut off your wisdom? All right, but go ahead, continue. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, so Nebraska, a lot, you know, a lot of people come from Nebraska, but you know, it's, it's pretty homogenous there. So I'm half Asian and I'm half black. And so I was kind of displaced, right? So I wasn't really sitting in all, in either of my cultures and my dad's military. My mom has her own stuff. Cause she's, she's mixed race, Japanese and Korean. If you know anything about that, they're two, two cultures that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Clash. And she was, you know, my mom's been through two wars. She was in uh, Japan for World War II. She was in Korea for uh, when Korea split. And, you know, my mom's been through it. She's such a but So it was important to me to seek out my identity. So I went to, um, uh, I was, I went to South Africa. It was my first time on, on the African continent. I went when um, Global Citizens was happening for Mandela right. Hunter. Okay. Um, I almost got got that night. It was violent up in those streets. <laughs> I was like, oh, is this the time when I get sold into to, um, slavery? I mean, I don't know. I was like, I'm going to get, I was by You myself. went by yourself? I was by myself. I so you're like a myself. nomad. You're just a traveling nomad. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went to Oprah school and I went uh, on safari by myself and in the middle of, in the middle of uh, like on the border of Mozambique, I ran into Slash and a honey badger. Wow. The the man yeah. slash? The man slash. <laughs> Guns and Roses slash. I'm just glad he was on the continent getting to know his roots. I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, this past summer, uh, it's been a thing that my mom has never wanted to take me back to Korea. And, you know, my siblings, they were born there. So I, I um, took my sister, my mom, my brother's daughter, and we went to Korea. And I kind of, this whole vision quest, because my mom was like, when I found out I was pregnant with you, I climbed Palgonsan, which is a mountain. And I, and I left fruit offering at the, at the temple. And I was like, well, hell, we're going to Palgonsan then, all right? <laughs> so, um, fruit still sitting up there. <laughs> <laughs> so we go, we have this really transformative time. And, it, you know, we, we spent some time in Seoul. And then um, near, right near Palgonsan, which is Daegu, um, is Gyeongju, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it happened to be uh, Chuseok, which is Korean Thanksgiving. And so it was just packed with people and I had scheduled all these outings. So I go and my mom's like, oh, I'm sick. And my sister was, she was down for the count. She's like, I don't wanna do anything else, leave me alone. And, um, and so my niece and I went out and, I, and at lunchtime I said, let me call back and see if anybody needs some food or whatever. I call my mom's hotel room and a dude picks up. Mm. And I was like, hello? And he's like, oh, 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 and my mom picks up. Oh, hello, mom, this is, is this you? <laughs> this is a mommy. Mom, who that? Who is that? She's like, oh, <laughs> who is you? You're what? I NASCAR back to the hotel and it is full of people, wow. full of people all whom I'm related to and I never knew existed. Wow. And, and they're quest. crying. Like, <laughs> you know, and then I start crying. <laughs> you know, so let me just tell you that I have a whole lot of family over there that I'm crazy about. And they were planning on coming to visit me and um, from South Korea and then COVID happened. Uh. And so all of the, a lot of things in, going to these continents and finding my identity and finding family that you know one i had to get over the fact that i didn't know i had all these family this family and my mom and i had to come to you know a really good understanding and forgiveness and love out of that and that's been deeply healing um but then you know the past couple of years i've um 
I've changed jobs and moved from uh, Owen to HBO Max. And now, um, and then, I, you know, a couple of years ago, I got divorced. So it's just so many things that hadn't had a chance to settle in. And I was like, you know what, let me just time out, time out and uh -huh. put it together. So congrats on your new chapter. Thank you. I, would nah, say, for real. I feel like every decade for me has been a new chapter. I, you know, like, um, I think about the 2000s to 2010 and that I was straight Broadway all the way. And then um, I was, my last Broadway show before I came back a, a couple years ago was Spam a lot. We closed and then I went to LA with it. And right. when I came to LA um, and I, I ended up working with Eric Idle from Monty Python mm -hmm. and we started creating new things. And then, um, and you know, cause I, I realized, oh, hey, I got some comedic chops. And then uh, Mike Nichols, our director was like, Merle, the you Mike Nichols? Talk. Huh? The, the Mike, Mike Nichols? Nichols? Yeah, wow. he really okay. champions wow. me. He's been trying to get me in Spamlet for a long time. He said, Merle, I really, really want you to meet Lauren Michaels. And I was like, why phone? Why? <laughs> and he was like, you really need somebody for Michelle Obama. And I and I recommended you. I think you're going to be perfect on, on SNL as Michelle Obama. Comedy? You came to the building? That's, that's a negatory. That's a no. Hmm. And I was like, uh, I don't, that's not my gifting. That's, that's not my path. Okay. That's not, and, and I felt really bad saying that to Mike Nichols, but he was like, mm, Merle, you have to do this. And he, and he really pushed it. He was like a, a real insistent daddy. So I met with Lauren at Paramount and we had a great talk and he's like, okay, well, great. Um, I want you to meet Seth and um, we'll, we're gonna screen test you for SNL. And I was like, what, what? This makes no sense. I'm not a comedian. I was very confused. But confusing. what this, I, I think of that is a, I, I mentioned that story because it's a turning point in my career that I started to think differently. I was only in like these big, Broadway musicals, and then I started to think of my other giftings and my um, my creative force, and so it just turned into this decade was about it was more about TV, but that was a catalyst for moral create, moral start writing. Moral, remember you used to be in that Chicago improv group called We Be Negroes. Remember when you did that and you left all of that behind. So find all of these things because you are not just one one thing that you've been you know like some. You're, you're not just the Broadway diva, let me say that. And so this decade has been, you know, TV, and I can map everything that got me to um, Oprah's office to uh, to say yes to Green. Like, yeah. Yes, so, the student in the corner. Yes, well, because <laughs> it's latency, I want to talk over you. Um, it's, can you explain the sort of, I don't, I don't mean hierarchy, and I guess you can also weigh in, Bill, unpaid Bill is, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's team uh, in the Heights and also Hamilton as well. Oh, is where the, the culture of like, why is the perception that, you know, Broadway acting is the highest tier of like that serious acting and television is just like, you know, uh, rinky dink pop songs or like just frowned upon or not as respected. Is it, in your mind, when you were on Broadway, were you like, well, this is the highest caliber of acting that I can do, and, you know, I don't care about television or, or movies, or is it, I, I seem to hear that conversation a lot, that you're not really an actor until you've conquered Broadway. Is it because that was your first step that you just felt that that was your true lane and nothing else, like you would lose the respect of your peers, or... I just want to know like how that culture is in, in their thought process. Uh, I think all the people on Broadway are real artists and I think they would love to be, um, be creative any way that they can be. So Broadway kind of fell on me. I, I didn't really have a whole lot of I, I didn't, I, I couldn't figure out exactly which way I was going to go. And this, okay. this music theater thing kind of opened up and I had a big passion for Shakespeare and all of that. 
And I just love the, the stage. Not only do I love the stage, I love the collaboration because you get to kind of be in the fishbowl with other people for, you know, six, eight weeks. And all you do is, is play, mess up until you come up with something really beautiful and viable that, that will, you know, be hopefully profitable. I see. Okay. So it's not like what do you, you think. What are your, because I, I'm going to call you the professor. Um, <laughs> um, what, I'm still learning. I mean, I learned a lot with the fail out production at that there's even different classes or would you say this bill like your, your the experience with the Hamilton production was there I mean obviously the success of it made you guys the 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 super darlings of of the great white way but um oftentimes I would hear that you know like uh, you know, plays of people with color wouldn't get that much respect as certain, or musicals is not as serious as Broadway acting is not as serious as the Shakespeare in the Park people or that sort of thing. Like the tears, the class wars. Is it? I don't think that there's still I don't prominent there's, now. That's there's, my question. Yeah, I would I would agree with you. I don't I think that there's so many variables with Broadway, whether it's acting or it's, or or whether it's a musical or a play or a, it's about a famous actor or it's about how great the play is there's no one's figured it out like yet i mean i think hamilton is fantastic but was you know in a box. that would have been a good answer it felt like it was going to be uh, you know i thought it was just me no you one has say that again <laughs> where you went yeah. slow you went robotic oh oh I was, I was saying that I think that, that Hamilton was a bit of a lightning, you know, like a, a flash of lightning or lightning in a bottle, whatever that expression is, and that, and that no one has figured out the solution for Broadway. It's all, it, it's, it doesn't seem like there's a, a viable business plan that matches a viable great piece of art. And it's all sort of variable and no one, no one has really mastered it yet. So it all feels like a really weird crapshoot every time to me. I, I, mean, I have a I have a desire I mean, as an outsider. Two very successful musicals, but like, just go ahead. You oh, know, for, 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 know a, for a guy with a daytime Emmy nomination, he should upgrade his internet service. Thank you, Steve, for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in New look Jersey. The, world, the nominations came in the day, and and look at this. Like that's that's. Hey man, I, th I think everyone's internet is janky because everyone's using them to, to death. All but y'all will all admit, can I just add, y'all will all admit that most TV and movie actors feel like they have not really got their acting chops until they hit Broadway. Because I think that was kind of what Amir was touching on too. Like, yeah. There's a higher, yeah. Because sure. yeah, I mean, because with Broadway, like, it, at least from, you know, from what I've seen, I look at it kind of like music is like the difference between like singers who are great live, but versus uh, singers who are great in the studio. Yes. Like, there's two different kind of. You know what I mean? It's two different kind of things. And it's like one is necessarily better than the other. But when you're doing it live, there's just a thing of like, that's in the moment. And whatever you produce right then, ain't no going back. Ain't no, I right, let me just comp this vote. Nah, it's, right. it's not be on point. But then you have those artists I've worked with that are great singers live, but you put them in the studio and they freeze up. You know what I mean? So it's- It's you know, also it's, an it's, element it's, that like, you, as a uh, Broadway actor, you kind of have to have an athlete's mentality because to maintain the eight shows a week and to make sure you're able to produce that, that the same caliber product each night and be open and healthy and, uh, you know, interesting and creative and, and on point that uh, the, the upkeep and measurement of your health and, and your instrument is also... Um, a skill in and of itself. Do you miss when the oh, rigor morale of uh, of the sort of the the rat race that is Broadway? Do you miss it or? I feel like I've never left it. I mean, I I just did that that concert with um, at Lincoln Center, and I was on Broadway like a year and a half ago. Okay. With Island, so I I feel like once you're in the community, you're in the community. And when I got to come back to New York. Uh, which I was so excited about. I was just right back into it. You know, you, you get involved with all of the fundraisers and, and all the, the new stuff that's coming up. So I just feel like I'm, I'm already. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, 
what the the one thing that I'm regretting that quarantining has uh, sort of places was I was really really excited for the world to see what uh, Tariq oh, and yeah. and John Ridley created yeah. with uh, Black No More and because I think if anything Tariq wanted to disrupt uh, hey. disrupt the process and really. Like, I I don't know. I mean, the only way I described it, have, having seen the table read, was if Hamilton was the Obama feel-good play, then Black No More is the polar opposite in which it's the Trump era, Black Lives Matter Woo. play. And oh, it wasn't man. even designed that way. I mean, it was designed... You you know how, Fonte, you once said... uh uh. Uh, the Netflix uh, show about the president. Um, oh, House of Cards. How House? Yeah, how House of Cards suddenly wasn't appealing anymore. Now that we started living it in real life. Yeah, yeah. Or same the with same black, reason why a black uh, Black Mirror, black mirror <laughs> decided not to have yeah. a season this year because yeah. we're living it. Um, <laughs> yeah, like this started out. It was a satire of of the highest level. And now that we're living in it, it's almost like yeah. it, it, it was futuristic. Like it meant to, they meant it as a an over exaggerated uh, statement of blackness. And now it's it came true. <laughs> yeah, it came true. So now it's going to look like a very like like timely on point. Uh, you know, like, how'd you guys produce something so quick? But we've been working on this like long, almost longer than the. Our involvement with Hamilton, so um, That's crazy. I think yeah, they're they're probably going to push it back. Well, you know, God willing, I think they're going to go for a summer twenty twenty one release for next year. I know, folks, glad y'all got all those Greenleaf episodes recorded, though. Man, listen, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I, so, I, is I it more... bittersweet? Is it bittersweet uh, for this last year for you and? And closing the chapter. Yeah, um, and you know, it's just been announced that, that the Greenleaf uh, world will continue, so it's not not really the end. Um, what, what was the announcement? I missed it, Merle. That uh, the that there's a spin off. Uh oh. Oh, are you involved in this? Is this you? Is it? Or can you say? Can you say? Yeah. No, can you say did. anything? Or is that? I know oh, you're looking at the corner right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's just a shake, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, like you were saying. So you can't yeah, say I'm, I'm more I'm more that the uh the piece that you were talking about, Amir, because that I feel when when our work is that relevant and that meaningful and that much of a commentary on what's happening, I think that's when we're really in the flow of what we what we should be as artists and, and uh I look forward to when it when it does see the light. Yeah. Merle, talk to us about um about Keith David. He's somebody yes. that I just I do voiceover work and I mean just in that realm, I mean, dude is a god, you know what I mean? And he's just okay, someone yeah. I follow forever. Good. What's he like? <laughs> What's yeah. like working with him as an actor? He's the best. And, and we FaceTime and as as he says, oh, it's good to see you, Daddy. Nice to be seen and not be. <laughs> 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 That's his voice. He's the best. Um, he is fun to be around. He has jokes for days. And I've heard the same ones a lot, but he doesn't care. He's, he tells them <laughs> with the same joie de vie. And, um, and also, he is a mentor and a teacher, and he's just generous. He's a good, good dude. And in our downtime, he would give me any bit of knowledge I asked for. And, you know, he is, oh, gee. And, um, you know, way back in the day, Juilliard, breaking boundaries. And he would sit there and work uh, Shakespeare monologues with me. Wow. And wonderful. tell me stories and listen. He was an ear. I would run things through him, you know. And he's just a... He really is a friend and um, he's a father figure to me. And I love him, man. I love him. He's good and he's and legendary. 
Did you have what to is take it a, specific? Oh, go ahead, Laya. Go ahead, Laya. It was just quick. Did you have to take a moment when you saw that promo picture with you, Keith David, Oprah, and Lynn Winfield? I know I was looking at that the other day, and I was like, what does Merle feel like? <laughs> that first year, I don't even I don't even know what happened. It was so, I was like, what is, what is this? I never even saw myself as a leading lady, and I, I really had to change my own perspective uh, on myself. And and I had to I had to shift my thinking real quick, and um, yeah, I, I remember when uh, Lynn, uh, Oprah, and I did the uh, we did a TV guide cover in um, in Santa Barbara, and I was just like, what is what is my I had those moments all the time. What is my life? And as I sank into it, I really began to accept and understand how how God led me to this place. Go ahead, Fanti. Uh, I was going to ask you about Shakespeare. Um, I was an English major in college, <laughs> but well, I wanted to know just as an actor, what is it specifically about Shakespeare that is makes it such a challenge to actors, and why is that kind of uh, whenever actors, when, right, when I talk to the actors and they talk about, yeah, you know what I mean about Shakespeare. In the okay, well, I did King Lear, I did this, I did whatever. Like, what is it about him that makes it so challenging for an actor to 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 uh, to convey? Um, I, I think it's considered it's just beautiful poetry, and it's something um, almost I can say almost all his characters I wouldn't mind sinking my teeth into. Even you know the second guard, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind because there's so many interpretations, there's so many ways to do it, there's so many ways to attack the text, but that you know it was considered a, a near perfect text that we can glean something new all the time, and as you see, it can be interpreted and staged in so many new ways, and, it, and it's thrilling. The other thing about um, Shakespeare is that as you um, kind of age out of, say, Juliet and move toward, um, you know, Lady Macbeth, Roland or, you know, or a, a, yeah. you know uh, Lady M and all, all that kind of stuff. There, that there is a constant relationship you have with the canon and it's always evolving. And I think it's a, a real joy to be able to um, attack it, put that kind of language in your mouth and, um, I don't know, it's, I, I just enjoy it. I enjoy doing it. That's what's up. Could you uh, tell us uh, about the uh, your your new HBO series, uh, The Flight Attendant? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a murder thriller based on the book, and Kaylee Cuoco plays the flight attendant, and I am um, trying to basically solve the murder. I'm the FBI agent, and it's a great palate cleanser. Um, you know we. Uh, Grace come back into my life. This is something that is completely left, and I always like that. I, I feel like as an artist, if you're doing something completely different, it fuels the other thing, which is why I like to stay in Broadway, or I like to do music, or I like to do you know a, a whole myriad of things because it makes all the work better by I think cross pollinating. Mm -hmm. So this show is completely different. Um, it's a different mentality. It's a different. Uh, vibe and I'm just having a great time. It's a great script, great people. It's Berlanti, um, and I, I'm just enjoying it. I'm enjoying shooting in in New York. I've never done that. Where did you guys shoot? All over, all over. There was one time we we shot in front of um, one of the government buildings right by the Brooklyn Bridge, and I just didn't understand it because it was. It was a uh, we we kept getting kicked out by Homeland because it was like at rush hour. And it was oh, winter, wow. and the you know the wind is whipping off the river, and then we've got the, the traffic coming off the bridge, and it was crazy. But I love all of that. I love you know brash New Yorkers that are just like, oh, you guys move, and I just love it. And we're we're trying to make like guerrilla television. I mean, I know it's unprecedented to you know have a, a sort of a, a not an event or a pandemic. Uh, shut down production in this way but um obviously i mean how how is it handled uh as far as like are you guys just on complete hold and 
told indefinitely because th- you guys haven't stopped shooting yet, correct? You were you were stopped in the middle of shooting, correct? It right. wasn't completed. We, yeah, we still have almost three episodes to shoot, and um, and we had to we had to just kind of pull the plug. So you know, we're just waiting patiently to get some kind of word. Let me ask okay. you as an actress because I've talked to a couple directors and writers. What do you need to feel comfortable to go back to set? Mm, wow. That's a good question, especially as an actor, because people are touching you mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And all the scenes on the phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Still I rise. Just last, last season of Martin. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, why are you call me out, Ponte? Because I started. I started <laughs> but no, there. yo. But you know, there is a um, there is a show. Um, I haven't watched it yet, but it's the show that uh, Simone is on. Simone, yeah, Simone Missick, Still I Rise. Yeah. They did it for their oh, last yeah. episode. They did it for the last one, and I heard it's really good. I haven't watched it I yet, did but I heard. DJ it. was just telling me. Yeah, yeah I heard it was yeah, good. They did it all yes, he plays D, like a D nice character. I heard. Oh no. <laughs> so it's possible. Wait, what's a yeah. what's a D nice character? <laughs> Actually, a person who's DJing. Oh, okay, okay. Like, oh, okay, I see. But, uh, and with the window in the hat. Anyway, but no, so wait, so what's your the answer? The window in the hat? Yeah. <laughs> what's your, so what's your answer? Do you need, like, more testing? I'm really curious. Do you need Ooh. more time? Do you well, need more well, you know, think about it, we're, we're using, people are touching your face with makeup. They're touching your hair and you know they're last looking you and you know there's hands on you all the time you have to be mic um i don't i don't know if that there's an answer to that but i guess I've, I've heard different things like i'm not even going to speculate um what would get tv up and going but um there's like that temperature taking thing right. and I, I don't even know Right. We don't have a vaccine. We don't have people don't have temperature. Mm. I really, really don't know. Ah, uh, I think right. it would just have to be a leap of faith. And and I heard the what Mr. Perry was doing. He just quarantined everybody together. Saw that too. I saw that. Yeah. And he had, but he, he has just... tests too. I think he has tests at his facility. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, so, you know, Tyler ain't playing. You, y'all can all yeah. sleep here. We gonna get this work done though. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So much to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Wait. I already, I already uh, admitted that uh, I fell down the sister's rabbit hole. Oh man. Oh I, no no no. We're not doing that. We're not. Doing I think that. three. No 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 no. Sis. No 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 no. When I didn't know when I didn't get the reference of the first Twitter thing with Tyler and him writing it yeah. by himself. He's then like and so on, and then I was like, all right, let me watch the joint. And then all right, well let me finish the joint. And why did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's like an accident. I no, he sucks look. you in, bro. He sucks Yo, you man. in. I can't front. Like it's no, he he pulls you in if nothing else. It's just like act like your, your screen is frozen, Merle. Just act like your screen is frozen. <laughs> he pulls you in. We ain't, we ain't gonna pull Merle into this. I yeah. no I'm Oh, I'm just saying that, you know, nine times out of 10. Oh, word. Yo, come on. Look another corner. <laughs> it's one and done. Fine. I watched one episode, but, you know. I, uh, uh, wait, Merle, what are you watching while you at home by yourself? Yeah, what are you watching? Let me side eye your ass a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what did I watch? I watched... Um, Never have I ever. Never have I ever. Is that Netflix? Netflix. I don't know. Is, I think I I, I haven't seen. But it I've yet. never seen. I've never seen. Um and um. And I think it, East Indian descent young lady. Um, it's awesome. I highly recommend it. You have to watch it. Okay. Never have uh, I ever. Okay. Never have I ever. Uh, I watched my brilliant friends, which is all in Italian. Okay. Um, and then I went down the whole. Yeah, yeah, give us a guilty pleasure. Come on now. <laughs> no, but I had to watch like Outbreak and Contagion. 
<laughs> you guys go through that? Oh, okay. They're really right. great movies, though. But They're good know. movies, though. Yeah. 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 My, my girlfriend says that Contagion's a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Idiocracy is a documentary. Oh, oh damn. God. But I mean, in Outbreak, even the um, the virus uh, mutated as well. And I was like, oh, now it's really happening. Mm. <laughs> oh, what else have I gotten into? I don't know. I watched, so I watched Black it. AF. Um, I, I'm trying oh, to you keep finished it light. It? You finished it, Ma? I did. I watched it. And what did you? And, and what did you think? Come on, yo. Come on, man. We haven't had. Fonte. You know what, Merle? I'm asking. Let's not have gotcha. I'm not trying to gotcha. Like, no, 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 no. This is not a gotcha moment. The problem is that we on this show have not discussed black as fuck at all. So I'm like, somebody give their opinion because y'all motherfuckers don't want to be on. I, 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 well, I, listen, you ain't. Let me I just tell you everybody damn. something here. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a complex, funny show. I mean, it's complex. It's, you know, but whatever. Okay, whatever. I, I've read all the think pieces on Black AF. Um, did you watch it? Yeah, I did. Okay. I actually, you know what it is? Because Tyler Perry got the best episode. I was going to say episode one. five That's was my one. favorite joint. That's the one. Episode five mm -hmm. was my favorite one. Four or five. That's one with all the creators. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. The one when they acting yeah. like they're talking about Queen and Slim, but they ain't trying to say it's Queen and Slim. Right. But he still got Lena Waite on there. Right. Yeah. I I <laughs> I was trying to figure out like what movie was he really talking about. And then I was like, I bet you it's Queen and Slim. Good face, Merle. It's good face. Um, <laughs> no, I yeah. You know what? There's some of it is it's like okay, I get it. You're going for the curvy enthusiasm right. thing, right? Black for curvy. black people, right. I get it. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that I, for all the think pieces that I've read, I also feel as though there's a lot of commonality that we don't want to admit that we have in that show that we don't want to admit. I think there's a lot and of middle class. By we, people. you mean oh, yeah. middle class black people? Okay. Middle class black struggle. Middle class to one percent tile or whatever. Um, I mean the upper middle that, class because they ain't middle class. Well, I, I mean, just the the struggle to keep up with the Joneses, which yeah. I think yeah. all my people, whole thing was. I just liked it better when it was. I like Black AF better when it was called the Bernie Mac Show. I mean, that's Not true. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah, but so. that's the thing. That's it, I mean. <laughs> this is 2020. <laughs> this is 2020, yo. Like them kids are now grown. Them kids are taking thirst trap photos on Instagram. Like, like they that was a long ass time ago. And nah, it got was. No money it like was. Kenya got. But I think it still handles the, the in terms of the like Bernie was like, okay, yeah, this is clearly a man that's very successful, black man. Very successful, raising these kids, trying to navigate parenthood and all of that. But, but it just does, it did it in with, a way. But I, where it differs from Bernie Mac is I feel as though it deals with his internal struggles. Like there's there's all of us have been in a position, all the people of color, at least in this circle, have been in the position where they were either the lone black person in a situation professionally in our in our professions mm -hmm. and that's that's a a, 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 a very greasy tightrope to be walking sometimes and a lot of times you feel you feel like you're selling out if you're too much to that side and you try to i don't know i i but i think that only matters if you think if you like that's my whole thing with the show all that shit only matters if you care about what white people think. If you don't give a fuck about what white people think about you, none of that shit matters. And because, because my thing was just like, it's very, like part of it is just whiny rich nigga shit. It's like, bro, if you want to rock a chain, a just rock bit. a fucking chain. You know what I mean? Like if you want to- Because he's already the king of his empire. So you got a point. Yeah, it's like, I don't give a fuck with these white folk, nigga, what? But those, it, that's where you are. But there are a hell of a bunch of, of middle-class black people that, you know, I mean, the reason why the reason why Karis one felt some sort of way about Prince B criticizing him 
is, mm -hmm. I mean, rule number one is like black people never criticize each other in public because, you know, we don't want to have them see what we like that sort of thing. Like, so I feel as though we do give weight to that thought, whether we care to admit it or not. You know, I agree. I agree. I guess I guess my thing was just more so like his shows to me, like they are black facing, you know what I'm saying? In the sense that yeah, it's black AF and it's black and mixed and all yeah, I think shit. they over but it's really it for white people. It's over explaining. It's, over -explaining. it's like, it, like blackness. Like too. his yeah, his characters don't talk to each other the way black people talk to each other. His <laughs> characters talk to each other the way black people talk to each other when there's white people in the room. And it's just like, dude, when we talk to each other. It ain't all this goddamn explaining. Us, and... But white people don't know us. So in this way, they are getting to know us in a way. What they know about Juneteenth, I'm not saying it's only, it's not only black people watching blackish. Now, black as fuck, that's a whole other thing. But when it comes to blackish and the things that they put on their platform, let's not do that. Because white yeah. people. No, blackish. No, I think blackish is, I really like blackish. Um, I really like that show. I just think that blackish, for one, People are gonna uh, watch Black AF and have a greater appreciation for yeah. Anthony Blackish. Anderson's acting, right? You know what I mean? Because you know, and then the cast of Sorry, of Black. That's the thing. I just thought it was a little meta. Ooh. Very meta. It's too inside baseball. It's too meta. It's like and nigga, who is this I was for? the kids were throwing me off because I couldn't tell which kid was what and daughters changing hair and. I love you know, the way you again, by you. episode five, then I was like, all right, finally, they found a groove. But I'm I'm going to give them a chance if they come back season two. I mean, we gave She's Got to Have It a chance. We did give She's Got to Have It a chance. This this is all factual. <laughs> and we got Winnie Win in season. Well, we got well, he was in season one, too, wasn't he? Wasn't Winnie Win? Yeah. Fat Joe? He was in season yeah, one. Yeah, no, he was in season one, too. Merle so. said, what did you guys so think of season two? Of I did. She's got to have it. Was that the Puerto Rico? That was Puerto Rico, right? Uh, that episode, that was the one. That episode, the Puerto Rico episode was. And dope. I like and the art episode. And when they went on the art retreat, that was the highlight for me. Oh, yeah. When she, okay, that. When episode, they actually I had forgot. real black artists that they were putting on showcase, I thought that was. Yeah, dope. that was dope. That was dope. Yeah, it was. Yeah, cool. it was you know, they ain't like it. They ain't like it, Merle. I, it was. Oh, I told you I didn't like Spike. <laughs> I, this, this is the thing that hate. This is the thing that irks me about even the the new film that's coming out. Like I want, I want, I want Spike. I want Spike to drop the '80s b boy, my nigga, like vernacular. And I I know that's his <laughs> thing, but it's like the blood, like. Uh, I don't it's know. already yeah, like it's already example. strike one. I don't know what you're saying. Give me an yeah, example. it's like your know. album is it's your 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 album your movie title sound like a title of a duck down album. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it hip hop. I swear I you can't please black people. Can you? No, but it's no no. I think what it no, is. I'm gonna like, watch so it, and I will probably. Enjoy I'm gonna watch it. it too. But I mean, but y'all see, how I learned do? this lesson with the the sweet blood of Jesus, <laughs> nigga. Let me tell you something. Woo. Boy, <laughs> nigga, I started to ask Netflix for my money back on that shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was a lot. That was, that was a lot. That was, that was a lot. And I done bit Spike. Look, I love Spike. We done had him on the show. I done been with Spike through it all. I Dude, mean, I sat I through Red Hook all, all, the all the directors. Merle just trying to stay working on this. It's Spike. It's Tyler. No, this is me and Fonte right now. There's nothing to do with Merle. <laughs> right. Merle could just Merle, stare at us Merle and <laughs> flick her hair back. I'm sorry. Anyway, Merle. <laughs> but we have to be able to okay so merle to bring you into it in a way that doesn't threaten any future work um <laughs> do you know because i look i love to see black folk working i don't want to fuck up nobody money yeah. so merle do you um do you see the value in having these conversations and as an actor do your what kind of conversations do you have amongst fellow actors about you know someone that you may not be a fan of their work, but you think it may be a good opportunity or you think like, okay, I'm not really a fan of their work, but I think I could kill this role. Like what, what are those, what are those conversations look and sound like on your end? That's a good way to remix that. Goodness. Well, Fonte's the best. Yeah. There are, I think it's important that you are clear within yourself what kind of story and what kind of caliber and you know what your parameters are what you know what what am i trying to say and do and be as an artist and if it stays within that lane that you 
I, you know, hey, yeah. But um, I can appreciate somebody else's work because it's something to begin a work and get it to air and get, you know, all of that happening. Absolutely. And I, I applaud that and I appreciate it. Um, and if there's something really, really wonderful out there that I'm just like, oh, this, that, and the other thing, you know, if I'm not in that project, it's not for me. I'm hedged back because something else is, is coming and or I'm creating my own thing. You know, so there, there are so many things that you really must have clarity and peace about when, when you're navigating what you will and won't do and who you will and won't work with. It's, I don't know. That's do you I'm have, with, without naming like any names or anything, or do you have um, any particular, do you have like hard no's for you? It's like, okay, I'm not doing this. I won't do this. Or, ha and has no, that changed over it. the years? Nah. Would you say yeah. what? Top. No comments. Oh, oh no comment okay well let me i mean we got ask no names yeah, go ahead. but on the back of that has grace has grace kind of entered your work psyche as far as like your future roles not saying that you're always going to play like mad politically correct type situations or but has it at all affected your future grace work been through the mud too she has but it's still <laughs> she has but. yes yeah has it affected um, I, don't, I feel like she's just such a unique case mm -hmm. because she is, she is so many things and she's been through so many things and Merle went through so many things with her. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it's just, she's, she's just not one thing. I mean, my last role was a, a paramedic and then I was, um, was I the leader of a rogue alien tribe. You know, <laughs> she's none of those things. She's, um, she's kind of heaven and earth, um, east and west, and I was very proud to play her. Let me, um, and, let me, and okay. go on. Let me ask, who is your dream screenwriter or director that you would like to work with? Who's your dream? Ooh. Who's your dream? Hey, well, up, up, what corner am I in? I want to you're point to the, the right you're corner. You're in the top right corner. Okay. You're in my you're the top, top left, left corner. corner. Okay. Corner. I just wanted her to point at me to answer that question. Ah, oh, shut up, Steve. <laughs> I tricked it. It was a trick. <laughs> I fell for that shit. <laughs> we, all, we all walked dead. We walked dead into that one. Oh, God. I'm giving I've her time to think, too. That's a hard question to answer because I feel like there are so many... Um, great artists finding their voice right now and i i like to be with people who are um who who know who they are and what and are are really gifted in their craft but also have something meaningful to say and when when those things come together whether or not it's commercially successful it is um it is culturally successful and that's that's the kind of thing that i want to be involved in and the fact that you can tell that there was a lot of uh, intentionality behind Greenleaf because they were just like, well, we're going to test all of this. Anything that we don't talk about, let's, you know, let's, let's dig into it and let's really resurrect that topic and, and open the wound. Start the conversation. Cool. Cool. Man. I loved you in Sons of Anarchy, by the way. I want to tell you that before I forgot. Yes, I forgot. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah, she got she got popped in the stump. She got killed, son. Hey, oh no spoilers. God, I forgot, girl. <laughs> she been over there. I, I know, been, but a, still, like for late. people that have watched. No, but no, no, no. I came to Sound of the Anarchy only like two, three years ago, so it's fresh in my head. Like, so I'm yes. yes. No, I yeah. love Kurt Sutter. Like, I would follow him anywhere. He, yeah, he treated me so well, and uh, everybody on that cast was really, really great. And you know, Rock, who played my husband. Mm -hmm. Dope guy, really great, and um, a, a pleasure to work with, and really kind of opened my eyes to you know what what more was possible because that was early on in in this you know television decade that I was in. What was that like? Wow. 2011, 2000? No, yeah, 2011 that yeah. I started yeah, that, that show. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. no, no, good. And uh, you know, it's funny that um, I think. It was this season because Deborah Joy Winans, who plays Charity on Greenleaf, she's a total TV head. She loves TV. 
and you know, I would FaceTime her and anytime I, I caught her, she would just be like, you know, yeah, girl, and I started this new show. I can't stop. And, you know, have you ever seen Sons of Anarchy? Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen it. And she was, she was like, oh, I love this and I blah, 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 blah. And she just kept going on and on and on. And I was like, all right, all right. And I didn't you say anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> I love that. And then it. one day I get a call, girl, you didn't tell me. I love it. <laughs> And then when the ultimate fate came down, she was like, oh, you were going to tell me that? You were just going to let me be wounded like that? You were just going to let that happen to me? Nah, <laughs> see if they ride it out. See if they stick with it. And that show mm -hmm. was amazing. So are there any surprises left? Uh, we're about to wrap up soon, but are there any, like in your, if you say that you have decade uh, evolution marks and this is 2020. Yeah. Assuming that we, not assuming, Knowing we're all going to get out of this, um, hmm. what's 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 on your 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 wish board for the next ten? Uh, creating, I'm um, uh, writing. I'm um, making my own music. I'm spending time um, putting out putting out and and and. Uh, creating the thing that I think I was put on the earth to tell, the stories that I was made to tell. And um, I think it's, you know, part of our, our responsibility as, as creative people to, to follow that impulse. And um, I have been very shy about it. I've been very uh, self-deprecating and unsure of my own voice. And I'm coming to a time where I, uh, fully, I think, feel, feel so strong and, and comfortable in my own skin in a way that I haven't my, my, I think my entire life that I'm, I'm ready to say the things that I have to say. Word for you got that on PayPal. She wants to be on Sesame Street. Yeah, you go. <laughs> yeah. Make it happen. No, got Carol, us. We, we, we thank you. We thank you uh, yeah. for, for being on the show. Yeah, thank you for your time. Do you speak Japanese or Korean? I have to ask you that. I spoke Korean when I was little, but I, I really have to learn it because, you know, it was funny because I was, um, when I read uh, Obama's uh, Dreams of My Father and he was talking about going to Kenya and not being able to talk to his family, yeah. I was like, that's me. I was wondering about the Korean. Dream. Yeah, I have, to, I have to learn it because these little translators aren't going to do it. <laughs> I can't yeah. sing uh, Silent Night in Korean. That's it. <laughs> Oh, that's it. I, I can say that's thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. So on behalf of uh this this raps, oh, I'm sorry. Damn, we can't even edit. No, this we can't. Cool. <laughs> but, but you know what? You wasn't supposed to because I was supposed to remind everybody, don't forget to go to your favorite podcast and check out that Fat Joe episode that just debuted this week. And we have a brand new uh classic, Linda Kravitz part one was posted. So go listen to that too. It's up. I love when you rap, like yeah, this is good. All right, finish the show. Rap, rap some more. Uh, thanks to everybody watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Yes, please subscribe. All right, and thank, you, Merle, thank you, Merle. Thank you, Merle. Thank you, Merle. Merle, thank you so much. Thank you, Sugar guys. Steve. Yo, thank you. Oh, you have. Thank, thank you, Stay everybody. Classy up there. Thank All right, you. this is Quest Love. We'll see you on the next uh, QLS Live next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.